Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so I would like to start with one question. Are we doing it right? So that's really a question that relates to the craft of building and operating software. It's about all these systematic, systemic qualities, quality, security, understandability that we technical people care about, whether we're developers, architects, CTOs. I think we all agree that Backstage as a platform is a great way to help answer this question because it's a portal that gives us visibility into all these aspects of software. It helps us understand if we are doing it right. There is another equally important question, which is, are we doing the right thing? If we invest a lot of resources, time, and money into our software systems, then what's the impact that we expect out of the uh, exercise? And is this impact really realized? So this is a question that should, of course, interest everyone in the organization, but that is a prime concern for the leadership team. From the PMO to the CTO to the CIO and ultimately to the board. And the question that I would like to explore today in this talk is, can Backstage as a platform be used to answer this question? And you guess that um, it will be the case. So everything that I will share today is the result of what we learned working with clients um, who were brave enough to trust us and to uh, believe in the vision that we presented them and that we then refined with them. The first client is Romand Energy. It's an energy company in uh, Switzerland that produces, distributes electricity, and markets energy-related services. The second company is uh, CNP Seguros, which is an insurance company in Brazil. So you see two geographies, two industries, and yet what we saw when talking with the CEO, the CIO of these organizations were very similar concerns, problems, and we were able to help them with common solutions. So in the talk, I'm going to uh, go through three steps. First, I'm going to uh, summarize the vision that we uh, have about uh, using Backstage outside of the technical uh, realm. Then I will explain you what we have actually built to uh, move towards this vision. And finally, I will show you some examples of how to interact, how to provide information, insights to these non-technical people. So you will see concrete examples of what we have done in the context of those two uh, implementations. So the vision. Uh, last year, I presented a short talk uh, at BackstageCon, and it's the first time that we presented DXUB, which is our platform built on top of uh, Backstage. And the key point about this presentation was to say Backstage is seen as a technical tool, it's a technical portal, but actually we see it as a development platform and we use it to create digital portals that are helpful not only to developers and to engineers, but to other people in the organization. And the idea was that with personalization, you could make it possible to look at the information managed by Backstage in a certain way. So what you see when you connect on Backstage as a CTO, as a CFO, or as an engineer is different. We use this material to go on the market and to talk to C-level um, leaders. Uh, and the idea, the, 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 the vision that we shared with them was how might we create a 360 model of a digital portfolio, feed it with real-time uh, streams of events, of informations, and how could, when the, how could we then use this model to get clarity and to make better decisions? 
So that was the starting point of the conversation with the, the, the clients. And what we hear from, uh, from, from the market are these um, themes, the general themes and questions. First thing that's hard is how can we explain and especially quantify the value that IT delivers to the business? This is a recurring question. Second question is, how do we prioritize our investments and our projects? There are always more demands than there is time available, than there are resources available. So the prioritization is a, is a, is a pain point. And to support the first two questions is, in the end, what should we measure and how should we measure these things? And yes, companies have lots of dashboards, lots of analytics, but still, when it comes to defining the priorities of IT projects and IT investments, it's still something that is hard to do. After talking with the C-level uh, sponsors, we then spent a lot of time working with the PMO. So the group of people who are responsible to manage the portfolio of projects and applications in the organization. And I'm not going to go into all the details, all the learnings that we made, but just highlight three of them. First, CIOs manage the evolution of entire information systems. So the software services, the software components that we create ourselves, that we code ourselves, that's only a subset of the information system. Every company is using ERP, and for the portal that we build, for the features that we build for the C-level people, we have to take these, uh, these uh, systems, these commercial systems into the equation. Very important. Second observation, spreadsheets and diagrams. We spend a lot of time to analyze, to understand, to study how the teams were working today. And the reality is that in most uh, companies, people work with spreadsheets to capture some data, to do reporting, to collaborate, and this works, but is a real pain. There are different formats, consolidation takes time, and is not a value-added uh, activity. So the, 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 an alternative to, uh, to, to spreadsheet is something that would be highly valued for, by, the, by the PM. Second is diagrams. Diagrams are a great way to collaborate, to communicate, to synthesize information. And what we see in all these uh, companies is that they create very uh, good diagrams with tools like Miro and Mural, and these diagrams are super effective. The issue is that they are static, so they are difficult to maintain, and it's not possible in these diagrams to display live information. So based on these observations, we asked our partners and we said, if we were able to bring what you manage in your spreadsheets, in your sea of spreadsheets, into a data model, into a database, and if we could make the diagrams that you use in your decision-making process if we could make them dynamic and live, is it something that could help you? The answer was positive, and that's how we started um, the next iteration on our uh, plugins. The last comment, we all know that naming things is one of the two hardest uh, problems in computer science, not only in computer science. A lot of the work when we design these uh, systems is around modeling, is around finding names and abstractions. And when you talk about um, non-technical concepts, concepts that are in the realm of portfolio management, you have the same, uh, the same issues. It's super important to align 
uh, the, the, the different stakeholders, but it's something that takes a lot of time. So the vision is we want to create this uh, platform that's going to give visibility into different aspects of the, of the software portfolio, and that's going to help with the prioritization, and that's going to make the value creation of software quantifiable, measurable. Next step is how do we actually do that? And how do we do that on top of backstage? So it's really about setting a foundation, doing modeling, and then designing a flexible measurement system. The first thing that we did was to look at what backstage offers us. So backstage gives us the system uh, model, and it's great to describe the structure of the software ecosystems. We have domains, we can fit systems within domains, we have components that relate to resources, to APIs. So it's almost like something that makes it possible to draw a map of the software ecosystem. If I'm PMO, if I'm a leader, I don't only need a map, I also need to set the direction. I need to figure out where I want to go and how I'm going to go. So a map is useful, but a GPS is more useful in this context. And the idea is, okay, so we have static elements, but we also need dynamic uh, elements in the, uh, in the equation. So what we did was first to look at what Backstage gives us, and it's always the first, first exercise, is to define the map of the applications, of the systems, of the business domains, and for that we can use the standard uh, system model. And then on top of that, we came up with new abstractions. Projects that typically are organized in planning cycles, quarterly, annually. Projects that have an expected impact that is connected to a strategic or a business goal. And then somehow you need to be able to score how is a project going to impact one or more strategic objectives. On the left, you have the real world. You have people who work, you have systems. This produces a lot of information, and the idea is to find ways to capture this activity, capture these events, fit them into the two models, and to come up with, um, with relevant metrics. When you have this foundation, then at the top, you can start to work on visualization, presentation, and you can really extract the value of this data and deliver insights to, um, to the users. At the end of the first proof of concept with Roman d'Energie, where the goal was really to deploy backstage and to work on the technical aspects, we came up with this um, interactive mock-up, and what you see on the screen, so at the top you have high-level metrics, the impact, the quality, the efficiency, the satisfaction of the stakeholders. And then you have this list of, uh, of rows, and what you see here are the cycles. So they are the quarterly cycles. And what you see in the list is that for the company, there are three pillars, there are three strategic uh, objectives. It's their impact on society, it's their impact on environment, and as a listed company, it's their economical impact. And what we discussed with the, the, the CIO was to say, okay, if we are able to get the data, to get these scores, is it something that, uh, that would help? And that was, put. that's the kind of, uh, of information that many um, organization are looking for. When you have the list of cycles, you can then drill down, see the list of projects that have been um, planned for, for the cycle, 
And what's really interesting is that when you have a project, so something you want to do in a certain time frame, you can link it to elements of the catalog. I have this project, it's going to impact this system, and it's going to be delivered by that team. And so you see a first example of a portal that shows high level, portfolio level information, but that allows users to drill down to all the details. And that's a recurring theme. For us, what we like is that Backstage and the models that we built on top of Backstage make this connection uh, from the top to the, to the technical details. Uh, what you see on the right, you see that there are also um, uh, a graphical widget. We have information about the progress of a project. We have an indicator of the um, satisfaction of the team over time. We have the number of releases. So you see that in the views that we generate, we use metrics and we present these metrics. And that brings me to the next question. How do we organize these metrics? What's a proper way to, uh, to, uh, to um, capture them uh, and to avoid to have a sea of disconnected metrics? And to do this part of the, of the design, we uh, used the goal question metric uh, approach that was developed uh, in, the, in the 90s, specifically to help with the design of measurement system in software engineering. The idea is that you start from high level goals. I want to understand the quality of my system. You derive a number of questions. I want to understand the external quality the internal quality of my system, and then you drill down to individual metrics. What is my sonar score? What is the number of bugs? Um, what are the, the, the team thinking about the, the, the quality? And by combining the, the, the metrics, you can then basically have a score for the goals. So this was really inspirational for, for our design. And what we did was to uh, implement this data model in a plugin. And these are the key abstractions that we use to then implement the, the, the portal. So what do we have? The first abstraction is a subject. A subject is anything that you're interested to assess, to observe, to measure. A team can be a subject, an application can be a subject, a project can be a subject. The second abstraction is a facet. A facet is one way to look at a subject. I'm looking at the project, maybe I'm interested about the financial aspects of the project. Or maybe I'm interested to uh, look at the impact, the expected impact aspect of a project. So the, the, the point is that a subject can be looked at from different point of view, from different perspectives. And then from the facet, we have the same hierarchy where a facet is split into questions that can be answered by running computations on metrics. Top left, you have the last uh, piece of the puzzle. I have my subjects, I have my facets and my metrics. Well, from time to time, I'm going to record observation. On this day, I see the value of this metric for this subject is 25. On top of the data model, what we've done is to create user interfaces and APIs to interact with the model. So what you see here is the back office where users can design a specific measurement model for their enterprise, for their context. In this case, it's a facet called the uh, customer experience and they have two questions. The first question is how is the uh, net promoter score evolving? The second one is how is the customer effort score evolving? 
And you see that for every question, there are several metrics. So the model that we have is not opinionated. It gives you the possibility to define your own facets and your own uh, metrics. We also have an interface to display the, the, the subjects, but as we will see later, that's not the most uh, user-friendly to do it. And then in the end, you have an interface where you can say, I have a subject, I have a facet, and I'm going to enter the value for these uh, uh, corresponding metrics. So you see here, I have selected a subject, I see my NPS and my CES, I have specified that it's a metric that needs to be reported on a monthly basis, and therefore I can capture the information. Is that the best way to do it? Is it the, is it the best way to record observations? For some metrics, it's the case, but of course, what we want to do is to be able to record most of the observations automatically. So that's the big picture of the, the system. We have a backend plugin. It exposes a REST endpoint to post observations. And what you see on the right is you can have data pipelines that post this observation. And then you can have front-end components, such as the back office, um, to do it. And to conclude, I'm going now to show you some examples of user interfaces that we can create using all this um, structured information. First thing, we can create dashboards. So we have widgets, we can say, okay, I select a subject, I select a metric, and a graph type. It's a bar chart, it's a green and a red um, uh, diagram. You just go and retrieve the information. What I find more interesting is this type of screens. What you see here is very similar to the mock-up that I showed before, where what we see is a list of projects. They are grouped by project uh, stage. And you see that there are indicators, there are timelines, and what you have to understand is that every project here is a subject, and every attribute is a metric. So the system of observation is what feeds the data that we then use to render this page. And by the way, this page was inspired by the spreadsheets and the PowerPoint presentations that the clients use today. You can then select a project, get the details, you see the different facets of the information, and what you see at the bottom is that because we have these observations, we have timestamp events, so we automatically get a list of the historical changes, which is something that people don't get with Excel and that they miss a lot. Possibilities are endless. This is one example where we have a tool. It's a radar view. We can select the two axes of the, um, of the radial grid. So in this case, we use the project stage as one axis and the strategic objective as the other axis. We plot every project as a dot on the radar view. And then we use the color to highlight the risk and the size to indicate the size of the investment. This is typically the view that is used in prioritization uh, meetings or when the leadership team is trying to assess, are we doing things that are aligned with the strategy? I talk about the, um, the uh, project, uh, the portfolio management. Enterprise architects are also people who we work with a lot. What you see here is an enterprise map where we have applications grouped in applications. They are connected um, to, to, to projects and that's the kind of uh, information we can present. So with these examples, I hope that I have convinced you that indeed 
Backstage is a powerful platform that we can use to create connected models that connect business and IT, and that allow us to uh, answer these uh, two questions. Before I open the floor to questions, I would like to share information. Next week, there is an online conference about inner source. Every year at BackstageCon, there is at least one talk that uh, talks about inner source and using inner source to uh, scale the adoption of Backstage. In the inner source community, where the goal is really to push inner source patterns in organization, there is the need to create portals. And for about one year, one year and a half, there is growing interest from the inner source community to use Backstage as a tool to do inner source. So you have these two relations. It's an online event, so I invite you to, uh, to have a look and to uh, participate. All right, there you go. Thank you, Olivier. Any questions for Olivier? Uh, Neil, you are up next, so if you can uh, make your way to the stadium, uh, podium. Hi, great, great presentation. Loved it. Uh, you talked about cycles early on. Didn't didn't talk much about it. Didn't talk much about cycles after that. Do do you equate cycles to milestones or how, what? I, and then I got another question to follow up. So. so that's not something that is enforced by the plugin precisely because every company is doing it differently and evolving. So one company is, um, is working in cycles, the other not. So it's not something that we enforce, it's when we use the plugin in a specific context that we customize it. Okay, yeah, the other question is, um, if you could estimate how many resources would it take to spin up not necessarily backstage, but this model for backstage or for another uh, uh, a reporting tool. Does that make sense? So, uh, what's the effort? How, how many? How many? Implement? How many? How, what's what's the staff size to to, to spin something that's this, like this up uh, uh, and then maintain it? So the, um, the 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 custom development and the maintenance is something that uh, is not so resource intensive. What's taking time is to work with all the stakeholders to get agreement on the naming. And then I talked about the business value, which is the holy grail. To work with the teams, to help the teams. Okay, so we have this system. This is what value means for us. That's taking a lot of time, but that's not technical work. That's not maintenance work. But this is something that is uh, highly valued, and that is part of the of the project. Yeah, you can have one more question. Yeah. Hey, thank you for the talk. Fantastic. Um, uh, this is maybe a touch more execution focused than strategic. Uh, in, in the beginning of the study, you said these customers you, they trusted you to move from their spreadsheets and their tools they like, which I anecdotally found with executives, that's quite the lift. So what in your mind, from a tools, techniques, or just execution things, you think earned their trust? Was it like six months of talks? Well, I mean, to, to get them to move into a software system that's bespoke from things they're comfortable with, what do you think got them to do that? So for one of the, the, the clients, we've been talking with them during one year. And we actually started by pitching backstage as a technical port, and, that, and there was interest. And we went there several times, and then one day it's the CIO who was there, and she really has a vision. So I think what got her trust was that we were working on the, 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 the pain points, and she, was, she also understood that we didn't have all the, uh, the answers and that we would have to find a way together. So I think that's a, that's a common uh, quality of these two clients, is that they were willing to do co-construction of the solution and exploratory work. Thank you very much. All right, you have a quick one? So we have it. Yeah, qu quick one, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I was wondering, um, is there a reason why you chose to do this uh, 
implementation versus using like something like a software intelligence, software engineering intelligence platform. And the second one is um, we talk a lot about PMOs observing what's going on with the subjects and the metrics, but how do the actual goals that the business wants filter down in the first place to make sure people start off working on the right thing versus reacting to what they're working on potentially in the wrong prioritization? So on the first part, the, the, the question is why did we not use a, a portfolio management tool? Yeah, like, like Lydia B or someone ah, like okay. that. Ah, yep. okay. So for us is that um, we don't want to have only dashboards, which is what you get out of these, uh, these tools. So the work we do is really to look at the use cases, the scenarios, ah, okay, so there is this meeting, there is this ceremony. That's when the C-level people meet and have to make decisions. And then it's to craft a user interface tailored for this specific use case. So it's kind of a combination. And that's what we love about Backstage. Is you get the, uh, the, the freedom and the complete flexibility to do your user interface. We're a lot about data visualizations and, um, and, and we can do that with Backstage. And the second question. Ah, so it's a, it's a bit what we do because when you design the facet and you communicate the facet to the team, you say, okay, so this is what matters. Okay, so we're interested in improving the quality because we have issues around quality. And what does quality for us mean? And then you do the breakdown. So it's, I mean, it's, a, it's very similar to OKRs. Yeah. 